There is a moon in our solar system that should not exist. It orbits far from the warmth of the sun, in a region where worlds are expected to be frozen, silent, and geologically dead. A place where surfaces should be locked in ice, unchanged for billions of years. But this moon burns. It erupts. It melts itself from the inside out. It throws fountains of lava hundreds of kilometers into space. This is Io, and nothing about it follows the rules. At first glance, Io looks less like a moon and more like a nightmare frozen in motion. Its surface is scarred, fractured, and violently colored in yellows, reds, whites, and greens. Massive volcanic plumes rise so high they briefly escape the moon's gravity. Entire regions are resurfaced again and again, erased and repainted by molten rock. And all of this happens more than 400 million miles from the sun. So how is this possible? How can a moon so distant burn brighter than worlds much closer to the sun? To understand Io, we have to let go of everything we think we know about moons. Io is roughly the same size as Earth's moon. From a distance, you might expect familiar behavior, quiet craters, ancient scars, and stillness. But Io could not be more different. While Earth's moon is silent, Io is alive, violently alive. Io races around Jupiter once every 1.77 Earth days, making it the innermost of the four Galilean moons. Like many moons, it is tidally locked, always showing the same face to its planet. One side permanently stares into Jupiter's swirling storms, while the other never sees it at all. But the real danger lies in Io's orbit. It isn't perfectly circular. Instead, it's stretched, ever so slightly, into an oval. That tiny imperfection changes everything. As Io moves closer to Jupiter, gravity tightens its grip. As it moves farther away, the pressure eases, over and over again, forever. And Io is not alone in this dance. It is trapped in a gravitational resonance with two other moons, Europa and Ganymede. For every orbit Ganymede completes, Europa completes two, and Io completes four. This rhythm locks the moons into a relentless tug of war, pulling and squeezing Io with clockwork precision. Imagine taking a solid rock and bending it back and forth endlessly. Eventually, it doesn't crack. It melts. This process is known as tidal heating, and it turns gravity itself into fuel. No sunlight required, no radioactive decay needed, just motion, pressure, and friction on a planetary scale. Io is being kneaded like dough, except the dough is rock and the result is fire. The consequences are extreme. Io is the most volcanically active object ever discovered in the solar system. Scientists have identified more than 400 active volcanoes across its surface. Some erupt continuously, while others lie dormant for years before exploding with terrifying force. These are not gentle eruptions. Some volcanoes on Io blast plumes of lava and gas 300 kilometers into space, higher than any eruption on Earth could ever reach. Others flood entire regions with molten rock, covering thousands of square kilometers in glowing lava flows. The temperatures involved are staggering. Io's lava can reach 1,300 degrees Celsius, hotter than nearly all lava found on Earth. In fact, scientists believe some of Io's lava may be composed of ultramafic material, similar to what existed in Earth's mantle over 4 billion years ago. In a strange and unsettling way, Io may be offering us a glimpse into our own planet's violent past. But Io's story isn't written only in fire, it's written in color. One look at Io's surface feels unreal. Bright yellow planes bleed into deep red scars. White patches appear and disappear. Strange greenish regions swirl across the landscape. This isn't art, it's chemistry under attack. Io's surface is coated in sulfur and sulfur compounds, byproducts of constant volcanic eruptions. When volcanoes erupt, they spray sulfur, sulfur dioxide, and exotic gases across the moon. These materials settle, freeze, react, and then erupt again, endlessly recycling the surface. The bright yellows come from crystallized sulfur cooled into thin layers across the terrain. The reds and oranges mark areas where sulfur molecules have been altered by intense heat and radiation. The white regions are not ice made of water, but frozen sulfur dioxide frost. And then there's the green, a color rarely seen in planetary geology. Scientists believe it comes from sulfur monoxide, a molecule unstable on Earth but produced in large quantities on Io, 
due to extreme heat and radiation. That radiation comes from Jupiter itself. Io is bombarded by charged particles trapped in Jupiter's massive magnetosphere. These particles slam into the surface, breaking molecules apart and reshaping the Moon's chemistry. The result is a thin, ghostly atmosphere that forms when Io heats up and collapses when it cools, sometimes in a matter of minutes. Io doesn't have weather, it has chemical chaos. And the deeper scientists look, the stranger things become, because beneath this burning surface lies a mystery that has forced scientists to rethink everything they believed about Io's interior. For decades, scientists believed they had finally found an explanation powerful enough to account for Io's endless fury. The idea was simple, elegant, and terrifying. Beneath Io's fractured crust, there must be a global magma ocean, a planet-wide layer of molten rock, sloshing and churning under constant tidal stress. How else could hundreds of volcanoes remain active at the same time? How else could eruptions occur across the entire surface without pause? For years, this theory held strong, until the data began to disagree. When NASA launched the spacecraft Juno, its mission was focused on studying Jupiter itself, its storms, its magnetic field, and its hidden interior. Io was never meant to be the star of the show, but as Juno's orbit evolved, it began passing closer and closer to Io. And with each flyby, something unexpected happened. Juno detected tiny variations in Io's gravitational field, subtle fluctuations so small they could only be measured with extreme precision. These variations told a story scientists weren't prepared for. If Io truly had a fully molten global magma ocean beneath its crust, gravity would behave in a smooth, predictable way. But it didn't. Instead, the data revealed complexity, irregularity, structure. Piece by piece, the global magma ocean theory began to crack. What the evidence now suggests is far more chaotic and far more fascinating. Instead of one continuous ocean of molten rock, Io appears to contain hundreds of localized magma chambers scattered throughout its interior. Each chamber is created by focused tidal flexing, where Jupiter's gravity bends and twists Io's interior unevenly. These pockets build pressure independently. They erupt independently. They reset independently. Io is not powered by a single engine. It is powered by hundreds. Think of it not as a smooth burning furnace, but as a planet-sized pressure cooker with dozens of burners igniting beneath a thin, fragile crust. This explains why some volcanoes erupt rhythmically, almost predictably, while others behave erratically, quiet for years, then suddenly catastrophic. It also explains something even more unsettling. Ios crust may be far thinner than scientists once believed. In some places, it may be little more than a brittle shell stretched over raging heat below. The surface we see is not stable ground. It is a temporary skin, constantly at risk of collapse. And collapse is exactly what has shaped some of Io's strangest features. Among the lava plains, eruption scars, and collapsing pits, scientists found something that didn't belong. Mountains, not volcanic cones, not shield volcanoes, but towering jagged peaks rising five to seven kilometers high, standing alone like daggers driven into the surface. One of the most striking is known as Steeple Mountain. It has no surrounding mountain range, no gradual slopes. It rises abruptly from chaos, sharp and fractured, defying expectations on a world dominated by melting and collapse. So how does a mountain form on a moon that is constantly tearing itself apart? The answer lies not in uplift, but in compression. As magma chambers empty and collapse beneath the surface, parts of the crust sink downward. Other regions, trapped between collapsing zones, are forced upward under immense pressure. Rock buckles, plates fracture, and isolated peaks are thrust skyward. This is not erosion. This is pressure sculpting stone like clay. Steeple Mountain is not alone. Juno's images reveal dozens of similar structures scattered across Io, tectonic survivors in a world where nothing should survive for long. Even here, in the heart of chaos, solid ground fights back. What makes Juno's discoveries so powerful isn't just what they reveal, but how alive Io appears to be. Juno has watched lava lakes overturn in real time, their solid crust sinking and breaking apart like ice on a burning sea. It has captured towering plumes rising into space, 
then fading away. Entire regions have been seen heating, cooling, and erupting again within weeks. This is not a static world frozen in geological history. This is a world in motion, a world evolving right now. EO is gravity made visible, motion turned into fire, physics pushed to its limits, and its existence forces scientists to confront an uncomfortable truth. If a moon like Io can exist, powered not by sunlight, but by gravitational energy, then heat, geology, and even potential habitability may be far more common in the universe than we once believed. Alien worlds may burn without stars. Moons may stay active for billions of years. Life may find energy in places we never thought to look. Io does not follow our rules. It exposes their limits. It reminds us that the universe is not designed to be neat, predictable, or comfortable. It creates extremes, it embraces chaos, and sometimes it builds worlds that seem impossible simply because they can exist. Io is not just Jupiter's moon, it is a warning and an invitation. A warning that our understanding of planetary science is incomplete, and an invitation to imagine what other violent, beautiful, rule-breaking worlds may still be waiting beyond our reach. If something this extreme can exist right next door in our own solar system, then the universe is far stranger than we ever imagined. And compared to what comes next, Io may only be the beginning.